If this is your first time trying out Visual Studio Online, you want to go to visualstudio.com, then click on the Get Started for Free button. You can also go to Products, click on Visual Studio Online, and select What is Visual Studio Online. This will give you information about Visual Studio Online, and then you can click on the Get Started for Free link to take you to Visual Studio Online to create your account. You will be prompted to create a new account. I've already created one, so I am going to log in with my ID. And as you can see, this will take me to my Visual Studio Online account, esteban.visualstudio.com. From here, I can navigate to an existing team project or create a new team project. Clicking on the Pluralsight link will take me to an existing team project that I created earlier. My homepage gives information about my team, any work that I'm working on, builds, or anything else that I'm showing on my homepage. Clicking on the backlog link will take me to my product backlog. Here you can see the list of all the user stories and features that I am working on. There are different ways that you can view the information. Clicking on features shows me all the features that I've defined in my team project. I can click on the view button and this will give me different ways to view my data. For example, features and backlog items will show me my hierarchy of features to product backlog items or features to tasks will show me my features, product backlog items and all the tasks that I've defined. My team is currently in Sprint 5, so I'm going to click on that and that will take me to the list of all the product backlog items and tasks that I've defined. I can view a list of my product backlog items and tasks or I can click on the board link and that will show me the information in a different way. From here, I can change the number of hours I have left on a task. For example, I might have only three hours left in this one task. Or I can also move a task to done. As I've made changes to these tasks, my burn down chart gets updated with my current progress. I can also run queries to get information on all my other work items. There are a few canned queries, for example shared queries, I can see my entire product backlog. I can also create a new query and generate charts out of it. I'll create a new query. Let's get a list of all my work items. I'm going to save this in my shared queries and let's name this all work items. Now I can click on the charts and generate a chart of my data. Let's create a pie chart, group my work item type. So these are all the different work item types that I have defined in my team project. Once I create this chart, I can pin this to my homepage And you can see that my homepage gets updated with my chart. That data will be updated as different work items get added to my team project. You can also take a look at your code from Visual Studio Online. In this case, I'm using Team Foundation version control, and I can get a list of all my files checked in, including all the history. This works both for Team Foundation version control and Git. I will show you more of that in a later module. Visual Studio Online also allows you to do automated builds. This can be continuous integration builds, manual builds, or schedule builds. Clicking on the build link takes me there. I have one build defined. And here on the top right, you can see a chart that shows me all the completions that I've had for this build. This allows you to easily see the status of the last builds that ran for the selected build definitions. Green bars mean that the build completed successfully, red bars mean that the build failed, and if you see a yellow bar, you will know that the build partially succeeded, which typically means that your projects compiled correctly, but perhaps 
your test cases failed, there was a problem copying assemblies to your drop location, or other problems outside of the main compilation step. I have different ways to filter this data. So instead of just showing today, show me everything that's happened in the last 28 days, or show me just all my builds. Since we're going to be deploying code from our builds to Azure, clicking on the last tab, Deployed, shows you all the builds that have been deployed to Azure. We currently haven't deployed anything to Azure, but in a later module, I'll show you how that works. Finally, you can also manage your test cases from Visual Studio Online. Clicking on the test link shows you the test plans and any test cases that you have defined. I have a regression test plan, and under each test suite, you can have one or more test cases. If you want more information about test case management, take a look at my Microsoft Test Manager Pluralsight course. From here, you can get a list of test cases. You can run them, mark them as passed, failed, blocked, or not applicable. Going back home, you can see there's another link to Application Insights. This gives you telemetry and analytics information about your application. You can get information about uptime, pages visited, memory usage, errors, and much, much more. We're going to cover that in the last module.